So what isn't there to love about Verado when you see it online and you see all the marketing, right? It's amazing, it's new, it's clean, it's, it's out in the middle of nowhere. You wanna know what the truth is? Well, don't go anywhere because in this video, I'm gonna be brutally honest what I love and what I don't about Verado in Buckeye, Arizona. Hello, this is Cheryl Willis over at the Real Agent Now group right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And if this is the first time to our channel, you're going to want to like that little button there and subscribe that button there and comment below. Look, we want to help you find the perfect home in the perfect area at the perfect time at the perfect price. But we can't help you. So you pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, night, or weekends, we got your back when moving to Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm going to give you the brutal truth. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. I was swept away by visiting Verado. I mean, completely swept away. I was a little apprehensive. And I'm going to tell you what those pros and cons are. But then I came back to reality. <laughs> so let's talk about top pros and cons for Verado, which is in Buckeye, Arizona. So Verado is a master plan community that was completely built by a developer. Like they take ugly parts of, I would say all over Arizona because we have had a ton of these like city pop-ups and built by developers. One particular developer was this one, it's DMB. And it's so it's a master plan community that was in the middle of the desert 25 miles outside of the greater Phoenix area. So know that you will always have that commute. Well, I shouldn't say always. Until the city continues to grow, it's always going to be about 25 miles outside of Phoenix. It is at the base of the White Tank Mountains, which I have to tell you are absolutely stunning. So if you are an outdoor lover on top of just amazing golf, this particular mountain range has endless amount of trails. And one of the things I love is they have all kinds of camping and trail education um, for the kids. They can learn all about the nature and how the desert survives through drought and such. And uh, there's all different type of educational as well as just enjoying the outdoors right here at the White Tank Mountains. So the entire city of Verado, it's actually Phoenix's addresses though, but this particular area called Verado is kind of divided into two. The original Verado was all kinds of housing. Oh my goodness. We have everything from townhome kind of style with the stoops and the front porches. Um, some of these homes start in the $400,000 price point um, all the way up to um, mid-range, you know, single family homes that are just three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, smaller lots, all the way up to these monstrosities of five, six bedroom, three, four thousand square feet homes up to the seven, eight hundred thousand um, dollar price point. Also, if you're looking for something with even bigger lots, maybe custom luxury homes, you can also purchase the lots and you can build your custom home. There's a list of builders, um, as strange as that sounds, there's four builders um, that are already approved to be to build in Verado. That doesn't mean that you can't bring your own builder, but um, if you do bring your own builder, there's a whole vetting process. So to expedite that or make things a little bit smoother, because Lord knows it takes enough time to build a new home. If you are looking at building from the dirt up on these custom lots, you're looking at about a two year time frame. Um, and the minimum square footage is 4,000 square feet. And the ones that are under construction right now, there's one that's at 10,000 square feet, just to kind of give you an idea who your neighbors are going to be. In Victory, which is the newer part of the community, closer to the base of the mountains, this is the 55 plus community and they are still building out here like crazy. Um, not a whole lot of really good builder incentives right now, I have to say, I was quite surprised. I think it's just a different buyer that buys in this area. It was interesting to learn that um, about 75% of the owners in Victory call Verado 
home full time year round. So they only have about a 25% that are snowbirds and um, which is kind of low. Um, even in cities like Sun Lakes or Sun City, you're talking anywhere from 35 to even 65% that are snowbirds. So again, um, this has a lot of owner occupied, a lot of sense of pride and community involvement here in Verado. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you kind of, I guess, as I experienced it, driving from the major part of the greater Phoenix area, I don't care if it's downtown Phoenix or if you're coming in from Tempe, if you're coming in from the, actually anywhere from the rest of the Phoenix metro area, you're gonna be taking the freeway in. So you're taking Interstate 10 in. And I have to tell you, my nose was a little turned up. I don't consider myself a snob, but I have to tell you, what's on the freeway, what you can see from the freeway on Interstate 10, it's not so pretty. So it's not the most inviting drive in from Interstate 10. Now, I also went out there in the middle of the day purposely because I know Interstate 10 is one of the worst freeways to use any given day or time period it's just if there's one accident you're cut off from the rest of the world one time i was actually returning from a vacation in california and i was stuck on interstate 10 in front of buckeye for over an hour and where i was at there was nowhere to go except for you just sit and wait so there is that to consider when i drove into verado though and as i was still driving into the town of verado there's a lot that will be coming. In fact, there's a new Costco right on the south side of Interstate 10 and the Verado exit. So big thumbs up. That's going to really provide a lot of resources to the Verado area. Once I got into Verado, I really love the beautiful drive-in. I'm telling you, the builders really made sure that this town was worth making the drive. They have created some of the most beautiful communities, DMB, um, in not only in the Phoenix area, but around the country. They really put a lot of thought when putting this community together. They have thought about everything. In fact, when I was driving up to Victory, which Victory is the newest part of Arado. This is an adult, so age-restricted community. Um, and oh, wow, they have a beautiful, it's called the Big Patio. It's right on, you know, the green and it has a beautiful clubhouse. And there's volunteers in there to just make you love this community. Don't get sucked in. Which, by the way, don't ever go to new construction without your own representation. Not only is the seller paying for our services as a realtor, but remember this. They are there to sell you. I saw it. I witnessed it. And I fell for it. I'm telling you. It, you can't not fall in love with new communities. The builders have made sure that you see the best parts and they never talk about the bad parts. So make sure you always bring in representation of your own to every the first visit and every visit thereafter. So there, I got off my soapbox. But as I went in, it was, the clubhouse was amazing. They told us all about the beautiful community in Victory, which right now there's two golf courses in Verado. One of those courses is the Victory course. And although it is open to the public now, once they get to full capacity, it will be a private golf course. So know that that is a limited time. If you are out this way or vacationing, I highly recommend that you go and check it out while it's still public course pricing. They have a beautiful clubhouse and living in Victory, boy, there are amazing amenities. Everything from craft room to a private pool, which even if you have your children, grandchildren visiting you, they are not allowed in the common areas. Now, of course, when I say common areas, I mean the sidewalks they can, but they cannot go in the clubhouse. They cannot go in the pool. There is another pool that is down, <laughs> down in the valley that the family can use. But in the adult retirement area, only the retiree age 55 and up are allowed in the center. So that's something to consider because most adult communities do allow grandchildren visiting, although it's for short periods of time. I have to tell you, the views 
from this golf course and all the new construction. I think there's four or five different builders and all different types of price points in the Victory area. They have um, a smaller starter home. I would, obviously, they would be starter homes for for 55 plus. But these are the, there, there are some smaller homes that are right around that $400,000 price point. Um, two bedroom, two bath, maybe 1,500 square feet. And then they go all the way up to over 3,000. I think it's even 3,500 square feet. I remember that one was David Weekly. And those are going to be over a million. Now, the lot premiums on these golf courses... <laughs> I was just be prepared. If it's a non-golf view, there was very small, maybe eight to ten thousand dollar lot premiums. If it was kind of like a little bit of a view, it was maybe like sixty to eighty thousand dollars. If you were on a green, there was one lot that was over two hundred and fifty thousand dollar lot premium. That's on top of the house, and that was in a David Weekly um, one. So that was so you're going to be in the, that house for about one four one five. And I still haven't even gone to the design center. But I have to say, if you're really looking for like true desert living and you're kind oh my God, the, the, the mountains are, are majestic. It's just unbelievable. And I loved how, you know, they've obviously, well, if you look at the desert driving in, you're going to notice this isn't the prettiest of desert. You'll say I was honest. They're actually planting in the desert. So the common area, although it's not real pretty, naturally they're making it beautiful. Like it's stunning. All right. Now let's go back down to the valley and call it the main street area um, where the other golf course is and where the vast majority of the people are currently living in Verado. And I have to tell you, here's where I saw those pros. I loved how there was literally one main street, Verado, that came all the way down. And then there was a little tiny downtown called Main Street. Now, it's unfortunate that there's not more restaurants and, and amenities in the city yet. But I'll tell you, if you're looking for a small town feel, it has just enough. They have a coffee shop. There's a couple little tiny restaurants, nothing fancy. There's a big CVS right on the corner. Um, like I said, everything that you could possibly need. Here's what I also really liked is it was like every neighborhood was just, just this cute little charming neighborhood. They had tree lion streets, they had homes with stoops, they had homes with front yards, and they had the middle school right smack dab in the middle of the town. Now, I have to say when I look at what the school ratings were in Verado, they are not very good which is unfortunate, but here's one of the things I wanna point out. When using greatschools.org, which is what I use too, you need to look at why it's rated. Like some people just look and see if it's a six out of 10, they're like, oh, it's bad. But that's not necessarily the case. There is, there's different, there's test scores, which you really wanna pay attention to, but then there's another thing in there with an equity score. And that honestly is what kills a lot of the ratings. And that has to do with the diversity of the students that attend that school. And so it's not always exactly what it shows. So read through the great schools carefully because a lot of these schools are around six or seven on the test scores and that is still good. Again, you have to, you have to look at what it means. Five is like average and anything above five is excellent. So if you find a school that's at 1010, not in Verado, not in Buckeye, not yet, um, then, then you know it's exceptional, but probably because it meets it in all of the criteria in their ranking. So read through that a little bit carefully. But overall, I have to say the Verado schools were not ranked very high. I, so negative is school. So far, I love the quaintness. That's a pro. I also like the small town feel and everybody was super, super kind and helpful. In fact, here is a barista that I spoke to and she was adorable as all get out. Oh, we have beautiful Leah and Lauren coffee shop here over at Verado. Can I ask you, what do you think about living in the area? How do you feel as a young adult? I honestly love Verona. I want to move to the lofts upstairs just so I can be closer to the main street. I love the diversity here. Um, it gives a Midwest feeling because I'm from Indiana and I love the porches. I love the trees and all of the grass. Oh my God, I love that. I love that. Okay, so you live more in the suburbs and so you drive in? 
Yeah, I live right by, um, you know where Fry's is on Indians? Okay, I live yeah. right across the street. From okay, so there's a lot of different stores and amenities here in the city once you're in Verado, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. What about when you have to go into Phoenix? Do you ever go into Phoenix? Sometimes, but then I miss coming back out here. I love living out here because it's away from everything. Yeah, it's like a city of its own. Yes, it's its own little small town, so I definitely would not move back to Phoenix. Okay, all right. Thank you. Then as I drove around Verado, like I said, the diversity of the type of housing here is unbelievable. There is kind of normal housing like you would see everywhere else. But what I loved about some of these streets is, wow, the builder, when they went in here, builders, I should say, it wasn't only like three or four different types of homes. They must have had like 10 or 15 different types of elevations and frontage and floor plans because I'm telling you, it has that uniqueness that so many people feel like in Arizona, we do not have. There's another town in Gilbert called Agritopia that this Verado reminded me very much of. Again, with the tree-lined streets, which of course right now it's kind of the middle of winter. So th there was no leaves on the trees, but I'm telling you in the late spring, I'll bet you it's absolutely gorgeous. I loved the, the homes that had the big front yards. That's my favorite, watching kids play out there. And here's another great thing. I got a lot of grades about Verado. There is another great thing I love. As I was driving through so many of these smaller communities within the community, there was a park in the middle of the houses. So you literally, every house, you walk out to the front yard, there's a park. There's all different kinds. There's garden parks, there's a big, you know, grassy field, or there's jungle gyms, or I'm just telling you, I, I loved how it was so family oriented. Now, here's the negative again. When I'm driving around getting you all this video, I realize I'm low on gas. And so I go to my Google Maps and I look at the closest gas station and I have to drive all the way either to Interstate 10, so meaning heading on back to town, or I could head on over on one of the side streets called Indian School to where there's a Fry's grocery store. Now, here's the problem. There's no gas in look like the main part of town. So you better not get to low like I was. I was a little nervous. When you get outside of the main area of Verado, it's just not pretty. Ugly desert, I'm not afraid to say it. It's ugly desert, older homes and lesser desirable type of neighborhoods. If you look at this aerial that I took on the south side of Interstate 10, this is what I would consider a non-desirable type of living area. Not what people are, are thinking of, especially when they're talking about Buckeye and the new construction and everything that's going on. It's not pretty. So, you know, once you live in Verado, you can take Indian School or Camelback Road into town. You're going to be about 20 minutes from really everything else you need. Like if you need to go to a Ross or if you need to go to Home Depot or if you need to go to the movies or any of that kind of stuff, you're going to be driving into Goodyear. That's going to be the closest proximity for you. If you are working in town, meaning Phoenix, you are going to have one heck of a commute because everyone that clearly lives in Verado that is employed, not in Verado, because there's no employers in Verado other than like retail, they're all going to be heading the same direction as you are if you're driving into town, no matter where you are. If you're going to Peoria, Glendale, Phoenix, Tempe, <laughs> if you're flying out, you're all going the same direction. So overall, I have to tell you, if I was raising a young family and I was a stay at home mom, I would put this on my list. I really would. I think it's a great place. I just, I loved it. I loved the feel. If you're someone though, that needs that social and you like to go to events and you like to, although they have a really cute festival and founders days and, and farmers markets and things like that. If you need the big city, then Verado is not going to be your thing. If you need mountain views, this place has mountain views and they're affordable. So if you guys are thinking about buying anywhere in the greater Phoenix area, pick up that phone, give me a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, or weekends, we're going to give you the doggone truth, whether it's good or bad or ugly. Can't wait to hear from you. Until then, <laughs> be kind, be safe, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.